Hi friends, welcome to my channel Ashok IT School. Myself Ashok, working as Senior Java Consultant. As part of this video, we are going to understand what is Ajax, how to use Ajax with jQuery and how to develop interactive and responsive web applications by using Ajax. Our agenda as part of this video is to know the details about the Ajax and understanding the differences between synchronous and asynchronous request. What is a jQuery? How to use Ajax with jQuery and several applications development using Ajax in Charlotte's applications as well as in Spring MVP based applications. All right. Let's get started first. Coming to introduction, what is Ajax? Ajax stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. This Ajax is not a programming language. Ajax is a technique which is used to create better, faster and more interactive web applications with the help of XML, HTML, CSS and JavaScript and Ajax is used to send asynchronous request to server. I am repeating once again. Ajax is used to send asynchronous request to server. Here you may get a doubt. What do you mean by interactive web applications? What do you mean by asynchronous request? Alright, I will give you small demos to understand what is interactive web application and what is asynchronous request. Let us see here, we have a simple application which is developed based on Spring MVC with Ajax. Here, I start typing some name. When we are entering a name in the text box, here you can see that response is getting updated. So here, let us see that Ashok IT School. Here, immediately response is getting updated. Now, let me remove that name character by character. The moment I remove the character, response is also getting updated here. That means, in the backend, asynchronous request is sending to the server. Here, we don't see that page is getting reloaded. Page is not getting reloaded, but in the backend, request is going to the server and we are receiving the response from the server. This is a interactive web applications. Let us see one more example. Here very useful and you, you can see this one in almost in all real time applications. Where in the registration forms we need to select our address like country, state and city. Do we need to display all the states and cities available in this wall? No. We will display the states and cities based on country selection. If you select the country as a India, we will display the states which are related to India. Here you can see that I am taking sample two states per country. Now when I select as a India, in the state drop down only India related states are displaying. Now so let me change from India to USA. Observe this page carefully. I am selecting to USA. Can you see that any page got reloaded here? No, page is not reloaded. But see the states drop down. States values are modified here. Earlier for India two states are displayed. Now when I change the country to the USA, USA related states are displaying. This is interactive application which is using asynchronous calls to load the data dynamically. Now, let us change a state to New Jersey. Now, see the cities. Here we can see that New Jersey related cities are displayed. Let me go back and change my country name to India. When you change the country name as India, states are related to India. Now, select India state. Then you can see that state related cities are displayed. Now, let us change a state to Karnataka. Here you can see that cities are displaying related to the Karnataka. This is a interactive application. So to develop our applications like this, we need to use Ajax. Ajax is a 
technique which is used to develop interactive and responsive web applications and ajax is used to send asynchronous requests to the server i hope you got why we need to know ajax ajax stands for asynchronous javascript and xml this is not a programming language it is a technique to develop interactive web applications using this ajax we can send asynchronous request to the server just now we have seen a quick demo what is interactive application what is asynchronous request all right let's move forward now so if you see a typical web application two parties will be involved one is client another one is a server here client will send a request to the server server will process that request it will send response back to the client this is typical client server architecture based application here client is sending a request server is receiving that it is processing that request sending response back to the client now here client can send request to the server in two ways one is synchronous request another one is asynchronous request now let us understand the differences between synchronous and asynchronous request first synchronous request when you perform any operation in the web page synchronous request will go to the server once synchronous request is sent to server your browser will be blocked until unless you receive response from the server that means once you send a synchronous request to the server you cannot perform any operation on the web page until server send response back to you such a kind of request is called as synchronous request and one important point here when we send synchronous request from client to server that complete web page will be reloaded at client side all right if you see this diagram here we are having a client processing that assume that it is a server here some back end systems are available assume that database we are using to persist the data and to retrieve the data here client is sending a request to the server server is interacting with the back end system and back end system returning response to the server server is sending response back to the client if you observe these two arrows here request and reply once client send a request here he cannot proceed further until unless he receive the reply from the server that means at client side browser will be blocked until unless he receive the response such a kind of request is called synchronous request let us see execution flow of a synchronous request from browser clients are sending a request from web page that is a http request which will be received by a server server side some components will be available they are executing and it is interacting with a database to retrieve some results from the db then that query got executed and it returns some response back to us that means back to server server is sending response back to the client step 1 client is sending a request from web page that is http request is going to server at the second stage third stage server side component is interacting with the database by executing a select query at fourth step database is returning a query response to the server at the fifth stage server is sending response back to the client here from 1 to 5 client will be blocked here if it is a synchronous request sending a request receiving a response until unless he receive the response from the server client side browser will be blocked he cannot perform any operation so this is a execution flow for synchronous request now let us understand what is asynchronous request in asynchronous request also that client and server will be available but when client send a request to the server browser will not be blocked for server response that means client sends a asynchronous request to server he no need to wait for the response from the server he can perform other operation also in this asynchronous request case javascript engine of the browser will not be blocked and in asynchronous request complete web page also will not be reloaded as we have already seen here here now when i am selecting a country name my page is not reloading just 
country name is going to the server it is returning states related to that country page is not getting reloaded when we go for this asynchronous request i hope you understood the difference between synchronous request and asynchronous request now let us see the execution flow for asynchronous request client is sending a request one he no need to wait for the response he can send the request to immediately then he can send the request three also he no need to wait for the responses from the server this is asynchronous request here browser will be responsive when client is sending asynchronous request if client sends synchronous request browser will be blocked all right now now you may get a question when client is sending multiple request how responses will be handled at the client side here when client sending a request asynchronously it will maintain callback functions to understand when response is sent by the server callback is a special function which is used in ajax so that server can respond to the client when it is ready to send data to the client so you no need to worry about that in next slides we are going to see how what is that callback function and how to use the callback functions all right so i hope you got the difference between synchronous request and asynchronous request let us summarize here here i have comparison diagram for synchronous request and asynchronous request first in synchronous request client is making a request to the server and he is waiting for the response until unless server send response to the client client will be blocked he cannot perform any operation here whereas in asynchronous request client will send a request to the server he no need to wait for the response he can continue doing his work after some time server will send response to the client using a callback function so now as part of this video we will understand why it is how to send this asynchronous request to send this asynchronous request we will use a special mechanism that is called ajax ajax stands for asynchronous javascript and xml this is not a programming language it is a technique to develop interactive web applications the main purpose of this ajax is used to send asynchronous request to the server in next videos we will understand how to send asynchronous request to server using jquery thank you